Today I'll be reviewing a 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee 4xE. Now the 4xE means this is a plug-in hybrid and it's the very first for a Jeep Grand Cherokee. Now in 2022, the Jeep Grand Cherokee was redesigned from the ground up. It uses a new architecture, new platform. That means it's much bigger, it's quieter, more rigid, safer, more features, and new powertrain options such as this 4xE powertrain. And with it, you get 27 miles of pure EV driving, no gas required. But don't worry about range anxiety because there is a gas motor that can kick in when it needs to. So overall, how good is this brand new 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee 4xE? Let's find out. All right, I'm behind the wheel. Let me tell you more about this brand new Jeep Grand Cherokee 4xE and tell you about how it drives. First of all, some of you guys may have caught my earlier review video from about a few months ago. I did already review a 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee Summer Reserve, the one with the V6 engine. And you know what? I thought it was a really good SUV. There was nothing really that stood out that made me think, hmm, okay, this is not a class leader. There was really nothing to nitpick. It was a really, really, really good SUV. So I'm interested in comparing that to this 4xE because there is a big upcharge for this powertrain. So I'm wondering if it's really worth it. First of all, let me tell you about the things that you get with a 4xE, starting with the outside. When you're on the outside of this Jeep Grand Cherokee, it's very hard to tell this is a 4xE. There's just a, a little bit, a few cues out there. For example, all the badging that you'll see on, on the outside where it says Jeep or Grand Cherokee, right? There's a blue overlay, but you have to get really close to be able to notice it. It's really hard to notice. So that's number one. Number two is you do see a charging door by the driver's side, right? That does stand out, but you know, some people may miss that. And finally, you do have a dedicated 4xE badge in the rear. That's pretty much it. It's really hard to tell apart a regular Grand Cherokee versus a Grand Cherokee 4xE. And that's not a bad thing. I think that was done on purpose. Jeep made this new Grand Cherokee look modern, stylish, and rugged all at the same time. This still looks like a off-road worthy, trail worthy SUV, and not so much like a crossover that you see each and every day. So up front, you still get that recognizable seven slot grill in the middle. You have some nice looking headlights and you have some nice looking LED lights on the bumper as well. Overall, the front end is a nice look. It's a menacing look, it's a masculine look. And of course, you still recognize it as a Jeep. And that's important. Also, you'll notice on the side, you do get a couple trim pieces that are painted in, in silver or chrome, right? Underneath the door, the door trim, and also the roof rails adds a little bit of a pop, a little bit of contrast, right? And that's good. And in the back, still looks different, yet still recognizable as a Jeep. Jeep did a really good job making sure people know this is a Jeep. The new taillights look very unique underneath. You got dual chrome finishers, which is really nice. Of course, you see that 4xE badge and the Summit Reserve badge, right? But overall, it's a square, masculine-looking look. It's not a round crossover look, right? But with this 4xE, you really can't tell, just little subtle differences. Now, the other major difference, of course, is with the powertrain. This is something that has never been offered inside a Jeep Grand Cherokee before. With the regular Jeep Grand Cherokee, you can select a 3.6 liter Pentastar V6, which has been around for years. It's a really good engine and produces about 292 horsepower, right? A little bit under 300 and it's a fantastic engine. But if you want a little more power, you can up it to a Hemi V8 and you're getting about 357 horsepower, a little bit under 360 and it's, there's plenty of torque. However, with this 4xE, get ready for this, you're getting a two liter four cylinder, of course, turbocharged, made into two electric motors. So you can only get four wheel drive, by the way, that's why it's called 4xE. I and mean, that's because the electric motors is distributed front and back. 
but you're getting a four-cylinder turbo with two electric motors and overall you're getting 375 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. This is the most powerful powertrain setup you can select right now for a Jeep Grand Cherokee. So if you wanted fuel efficiency and you want to save on gas, but you also wanted maximum horsepower, this 4xe is what you would select. So it's quite amazing if you think about that. Now, as for towing though, unfortunately, this 4xe powertrain tows the least. You get about 6,000 pounds, which is actually a thousand pounds more than most mid-size crossover SUVs. However, if you compare it to the V8, it could tow about 7,200 pounds, and the V6, it could tow about 6,200 pounds. So it's strange that even this plug-in hybrid with so much power tows less than even the V6 Jeep Grand Cherokee. So keep that in mind if you are looking to tow a lot, a lot more than 6,000, then you probably can't select this powertrain. But for everyone else, 6,000 is plenty. Because this is a plug-in hybrid, right now I'm still driving in EV mode. There are three buttons that you could choose. There's one that's called hybrid, and basically the Grand Cherokee will do its thing. It'll balance between EV and the gas motor as much as it can, but it'll utilize most of the EV range uh, to, of course, help you save gas. That's the mode I'm in right now. But you could also press the electric button, which will just make the Grand Cherokee run in EV mode. And then there's finally another button called E-Save, which will just run in gas mode only. In case you want to save up that EV range, you could. So there are three modes to choose from. Now, when I got this Grand Cherokee, it was on zero for range, right? Um, so I decided to plug it into my, uh, my home outlet in the garage, and it took about 15 hours. So if you do plan on you know, charging this 4xe at home, keep in mind a 120 charger regular household outlet, it's gonna take some time. If you're using a 240 charger, it goes much quicker, anywhere between three to four hours, right? So keep that in mind. For right now, in hybrid mode and EV mode, I'm sitting here, it's quiet. It's just as quiet as the EV car. There is no sound whatsoever. And when you speed up, you just kind of move, right? There's, there's just no noise. Usually with EV cars, you get this like slight whine when you're speeding up. Uh, it's weird that with this, you don't. It, it just kind of moves and you don't really hear any whine at all. So it's kind of interesting, but you're getting a very quiet ride, that's for sure. Without engine noise, without exhaust noise, even though you get chrome finishers out back, right? <laughs> Uh, you're not utilizing the exhaust all that much, at least not right now. Um, so it's a very quiet ride. Well insulated, no wind noise, cars passing by. I, you know, don't hear much, right? So this new Grand Cherokee obviously is really well insulated, but the 4xe makes it even quieter. Look at my main screen over here in hybrid mode. There's this cool graphic that shows where all the power is going between the battery cells and the rear wheels or to the front wheels. I mean, you see all this happening in real time. It's quite cool, it's quite cool. Now in a little bit, I'm gonna test out this, this power because of course you get a lot of it. But right now, just driving on local roads, it's very comfortable very comfortable. I mean, then again, the regular Jeep Grand Cherokee I tested was driving very comfortable. So I didn't expect anything differently. The throttle feels a little bit different with this 4xe. It feels more like an EV car. It's more linear, but not as, uh, I'd say not as precise, but overall, I think it's a good feeling. And there's there's, there's just a, a niceness to it. Let's just put it that way. Now, as for size, just so you're aware, there are two different kinds of Jeep Grand Cherokees. There's a Jeep Grand Cherokee L, and then there's a regular. The L gives you a third row, and it's about 11 inches longer. This is already a very long SUV, so the L makes the Grand Cherokee quite long, but overall, this has grown in, in size. 
It's taller, it's wider, it's longer, right? So passengers, plenty of room. This is meant for five passengers, but yeah, everywhere, first row, second row, plenty of room. I'm five feet 10 up front right now. I'm feeling great. In the back, feeling great too. I still have three to four inches of leg room behind my driving position. About the same with headroom, three to four inches. So again, hauling five people around is this Grand Cherokee, no problem. But if you wanted to haul seven, right, then you should opt for the L. And I haven't driven an L yet, but it does utilize a different platform with longer wheelbase and of course, increased length. I will test that in the future. Now, because this is a big SUV and only two rows, you got plenty of cargo room. Look at behind the power tailgate, look at how much room you have. So much room in the back, right? Unfortunately, there's no hidden storage. There's a spare tire underneath, so there's no hidden storage. There's not quite a lot in the back, to be honest, but if you fold down the second row, you'll see they fold basically virtually flat with the cargo room, so you get even more cargo room, right? And that's, that's good. You get plenty of cargo room and passenger room with this new Grand Cherokee. Now, something else that you get, I didn't mention yet with this 4xe is regenerative braking. So this is a big deal when it comes to EV cars and plug-in cars and, and hybrids overall. Basically, regenerative braking, utilize the brakes and regenerate some of the power back to the, to the battery, right? From, from my real world testing, I haven't really noticed that much, right? I'm assuming that if you're coasting down a mountain and you're just laying off um, the pedals, I'm sure maybe then it'll equate to something, but in terms of normal driving, and I've driven a lot of EV cars, I've tested a lot of them, I never see regenerative braking actually get you back even a mile. <laughs> um, so. I'm not quite sure, I mean, I think it's just hyped up. But there is a dedicated button on top of your main infotainment screen. It just has a battery and it says on. So basically you could turn max regeneration on or off. There's no in between. There are other cars like the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and uh, Kia EV6. They let you use the paddle shifters to change your regenerative level and same thing with the ID4, but not with this. You either turn max on or max off. So right now I have max on, okay? And I let go of the gas or the pedal. And yeah, the Grand Cherokee does utilize regenerative braking and come to a stop pretty quickly, although it's not as much as some of the EV cars I've dr driven, like Tesla's, for example have a ton of regenerative braking. You just come to a stop right away. Now, I just turn it off. I take off my foot off the gas pedal or accelerator. Yeah, I'm coasting a lot more. So there is a big difference, and I'm sure most of you guys getting into a EV for a first time or getting into this, you'll probably want that off. But after a while, leaving it on isn't so bad. Once you get used to it, then you can do one pedal driving and you know, it's just one of those things you have to get used to over time, if you choose to. Okay, so I just started to zero to 60 and to be honest, I, I expected I expected a lot more. With, with, with the, the power output <laughs> that's stated on paper, I expected to be really flying. So it was a kind of weird, experience. I floored it and then nothing happened. Then all of a sudden I got pushed back a little bit. Then nothing happened again. And then we started going, but overall zero to 60 was a weird experience. It wasn't like a, like a instant, you know, move kind of thing. There was a delay and then the power band seemed to not be in, in full power. Yeah. It's, it's weird. It's weird. All right, I'm just gonna test. Like right now I'm cruising at 50. What about just acceleration here uh, or passing speed? So that was 50 up to 70. I'm slowing down now. Again, when I floored it, there was a delay, maybe like a second or two. Then it started speeding up. 
So I kind of expected those electric motors to kick in that that torque instantly, but it seems like there were there was turbo lag or something. It's quite strange, quite strange. I am in auto mode right now. There are several driving modes. There's rock, sand, mud, snow, sport, right? So there's many different modes. Of course, if you wanna go off-road, you can. This Jeep Grand Cherokee has over eight inches of ground clearance, one of the highest in this segment. And if you choose the, the Trailhawk, it actually goes up to 11.3 inches, which is, I do believe the most for this segment, but you're definitely getting a ton of ground clearance, which means your braking angle, you know, approach angle, departure angle are among the best for a midsize SUV. And combined with the awesome 4x4 setup inside a Grand Cherokee, you pretty much you could go anywhere. There's also a four-wheel drive low mode. In case you get stuck, you could utilize that to pretty much get out of anything. But I was in auto okay now i'm in sport all right i'm traveling 50 right now i floor it it's about the same i don't really notice any difference between sport and and auto mode uh i may have to do a zero to 60 again let's slow down a little bit let's, all right i'm about I'm going about 20 miles per hour now. Floor it. Okay. Yeah, I think there's a little bit, little bit difference. So that time I did 20 to 60. Yeah, I think sport makes a little difference, but overall, the power output 375, 470, kind of expected more. Didn't get didn't get more now because it's a summit reserve this is a top trim level you get basically every feature you can think of okay you get a lot of screens four screens in fact so you do have a digital gauge cluster it's huge in front of your face right and this of course replaces the tachometer and speedometer and it has a whole plethora of things you could look at in fact there's like a library of things you could choose from for anywhere from your navigation to your radio also Things that, of course, relate to off-road, like what your Jeep is doing, right? And, of course, there's settings and trip computer and all that good stuff. But it's right in front of you. And there's dedicated things on here just for the 4xe, obviously, because this is a plug-in hybrid. So on the right side, it gives you a percentage of your range and how much miles you actually have. So when in full, it's about 27. Right now, I'm down to like 19. Gives you the overall miles in terms of how much you can drive, right? And also on the left side, you do have this little gauge that goes up and down that shows whether or not you're using the range or you're charging, right? So there's a little things in here that separates a 4xe from a regular Grand Cherokee. Now, the other screen you get, of course, is the main infotainment screen. This is a fantastic screen. I love this screen. The home page basically is customizable. You can scroll through a variety of widgets and you can select your widgets yourself, right? So it's nice. Underneath, you have a few menu buttons between like your media, your climate, your vehicle settings, stuff like that. Wireless Android Auto, wireless Apple CarPlay, those are standard. Wi-Fi hotspot is standard. I mean, there's a lot of things in here that's really cool. Climate control, in case you didn't want to use a touchscreen, there's dedicated buttons underneath. So your heated steering wheel, your ventilated seats, uh, heated seats, all that good stuff is right there. So Jeep doesn't force you to have to use the screen, but utilizing the screen ain't bad either. Now, as for USB ports, I'm glad to see that Jeep did not skimp out because there's a lot of USB ports. There's four USB ports up front and four in the rear. A lot of modern cars, you get like two, that's it. I don't know why manufacturers skimp on USB ports, but not a problem inside this Jeep Grand Cherokee. Now, that's only two screens. You also get a third screen for the passenger. This is unique. It's starting to become a thing, although I'm not sure how many people actually use it, but there's a button on top. You press it, it turns on this other screen, and the passenger can actually watch movies. There's the HDMI input also, they can select the music and look at a few other things, right? You don't really want a passenger to mess with your audio settings, but 
They could, but there is another screen there. And lastly, there's a screen inside the rear view mirror because you can switch it on and look at a digital view of what's behind you, right? So there's four beautiful screens in here. Yeah, it's nice, it's nice. Other features you get, well, a nice heads up display. I can't really show you, but it's good. It's in front of your face, tells you, you know, uh, what your speed limit is, how fast you're going, what street you're on. It'll give you step-by-step -step directions, um, you know, safety things. It'll pop up in front of your face. You get a wireless charger. You get foldable mirrors. Those are pretty standard. You get two memory seat options. Again, pretty standard. You get home link buttons, big panoramic sunroof on top. Very nice. In the back too, for second row, you get four four vents, so second rear, uh, second row passengers are not gonna get hot or cold. Four vents, they get sun shades. They also get heated and ventilated seats along with their own dedicated climate control. So that's also pretty nice. And overall, with the summer reserve, you're pretty much getting everything because this is the top trim level, but you are paying for it. The summer reserve is not cheap. The steering with this new Grand Cherokee is fantastic. I like this new steering wheel. It's nice. It looks nice. It feels nice. The leather is good. The buttons and the paddle shifters, well placed. Also behind the steering wheel, there's a couple buttons for changing your stations and also for volume. That's pretty unique to Jeep. But overall, the steering looks good. Uh, the steering wheel looks good, I should say. But the steering itself is also very precise. There's almost no steering wheel play. Every little movement I feel, it has a good solid weight but isn't too heavy. So uh, the steering inside this new Grand Cherokee is good. I don't think it's been affected by the 4xe setup. Also, it's powered so it can move in and out, up and down. Yeah, it's powered. I just came to a stop. I didn't talk about max regenerative braking before that dedicated button, right? But I have that off and I'm just coming to a stop by myself. The pedal does feel differently. There's a little jitter to it when you're stopping, right? You could definitely feel some of the regenerative braking kick in when you're pressing it, coming to a stop. It's not awful, but it definitely doesn't feel like a normal linear pedal. So just keep that in mind. Now, as for comfort, I didn't mention about the seats. They are really good. Not only do they feel good, but they look fantastic. This is Summer Reserve, so you're getting beautiful, beautiful quilted stitching, perforated leather seats. Inside this one, of course, it's like a caramel color, adds to the luxuriousness, and you do have that same color stitching inside. You get beautiful real wood trim, not fake, real wood, right? But you combine that with all the modern technology, right? With the high quality leather, the contrast, the stitching, the use of aluminum. It's a good looking cabin inside, that's for sure. And the seats are very comfortable. They're big and they're not too snug. And overall, they feel good. I'm, I'm driving around and it just feels right, feels comfortable. And because how spacious it is inside, how big it is, right? Even in the second row, it feels very comfortable. So overall, it's very nice. It's very nice inside this Jeep Grand Cherokee. Now, as for pricing, there are five trim levels to choose from that comes with this 4xe powertrain. The base is just called base, and it's a little bit under $61,000. Then you have the Trailhawk around $64,000. Then you have the Overland around 68,000. Then you have the Summit, which is around 71,000. And finally, this one that I'm driving, the Summit Reserve, the top trim level is around $76,000. And if you're comparing, a 4xe powertrain option is around nine to $10,000 over a regular Jeep Grand Cherokee with the V6 engine. So it's up to you to decide whether or not this 4xe powertrain option is worth the cost. So to conclude, am I a fan? Yes. Like I said at the beginning, when I reviewed a regular non 4xe Jeep Grand Cherokee Summer Reserve, 
I had very little, very little to nitpick on. I thought it was just a fantastic SUV and I still feel the same way. Jeep really went all out and made sure they thought of pretty much everything. There's really nothing for me to nitpick on. The only one thing I could talk about is the price. Now I already mentioned the price. The 4xe costs anywhere from nine to 10,000 more than a regular Jeep Grand Cherokee. Is that worth it to you? You have to decide that. And this 4xe Summit Reserve is not cheap. MSRP is coming in around $76,000, which definitely puts it into the luxury car segment. Also makes it compete with pure EV cars out there like Tesla. So again, you have to decide, is this worth it to you? Would you rather have a plug-in hybrid over a pure EV SUV? All right, guys, smash the like, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you tune in to my future review videos. Have a good one. Bye-bye.